Daniel in the Lion's Den, Daniel 6. In this lesson, we will see how Daniel was faithful to God, even when his life was in danger. We too will learn to be bold and brave for him. Have you ever been scared by a growling dog? Some kinds of dogs can be very mean and even attack people. You always need to ask the owner of a dog if you can pet his dog because the animal might turn and attack you. Bears can also be very dangerous. Park rangers often issue warnings in some areas of the Rocky Mountains that hikers should watch out for the bears. You would not want to run into a hungry grizzly bear. Another animal that is very scary is a snapping alligator. Getting in the water with one of these critters might mean that you would lose your arm or your leg. Believe it or not, in this lesson we will learn how Daniel had to face a whole pride of mean, angry lions. Just like bears and alligators, lions can be very deadly. Daniel had to face the lions because he was determined in his heart to be faithful to God no matter what happened. This story is found in the book of Daniel chapter 6. Daniel is in the Old Testament. It is the last book in the section of books called the Major Prophets. It was written by Daniel, who was a prophet when Israel was in captivity in Babylon. Let's say the Major Prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. As a young 14-year-old boy, Daniel had been taken captive from Israel to live in the land of Babylon. Daniel loved and wanted to obey God even in this foreign land that did not worship him. So Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, decided not to eat meat that had been sacrificed to idols. Because God gave these faithful young men great wisdom and understanding, they were chosen to serve King Nebuchadnezzar for many years as his advisors and rulers. When King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream about a golden image, God used Daniel to explain the meaning of the dream. When Daniel told the interpretation to the king, Daniel was named the chief of all of the advisors. Babylon was one of the greatest and most powerful nations that has ever ruled. King Nebuchadnezzar became very proud of his accomplishments and he began to give the glory to himself. He even built an image and commanded everyone to bow down and worship him. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow down, they were thrown alive into a fiery furnace. But God miraculously saved them from the fire. Eventually, Daniel was able to show King Nebuchadnezzar that there was only one God, the Lord of heaven and earth. And even King Nebuchadnezzar came to worship God too. However, most of the people in the land of Babylon still worshipped idols 
made of gold, silver, wood, and bronze. And as the years passed, and after King Nebuchadnezzar died, God and his prophet Daniel were forgotten. Actually, King Nebuchadnezzar's grandson, Belshazzar, became the king. He was a cruel, selfish man who thought only about having a good time. Under his rule, the city of Babylon was full of wickedness and sin. Once again, God used Daniel to interpret a message that he had for King Belshazzar. God gave King Belshazzar the warning through a handwriting that came on the wall, and it said that his kingdom would soon fall to the Medes and the Persians. And that night, the prophecy came true. The new king in Babylon was Darius the Mede, and he was appointed by the great Persian king Cyrus. It all happened as Daniel had prophesied it would many years before when he told King Nebuchadnezzar about the coming kingdoms. Even though Daniel was a Jew in Babylon, God blessed him when the Medes and the Persians took control over the land. Daniel had come to Babylon when he was only 14, and now he was over 80 years old. But Daniel never stopped trusting and obeying God. Each day Daniel would pray facing Jerusalem in his own homeland. He prayed once in the morning, then at noon, and finally at night. He prayed that his people, the Jews, would someday be able to return to their homeland of Israel. When the new king, Darius, took over the government, he needed three men to be in charge of his new cabinet. Because King Darius had heard what a good job Daniel had done for King Nebuchadnezzar, he named him as one of the leaders. Daniel, along with two others, supervised 120 officials who governed the empire for King Darius. Daniel soon showed that he worked better than all the other governors, and he was so outstanding that the king considered putting him in charge of the whole kingdom. The other governors were jealous, and they tried to find something wrong with the way Daniel ruled the empire. But they could not, as Daniel was so honest and reliable. Often jealousy will lead people to be mean and deceptive, and that's what happened to these other men. Daniel's enemies began to plot against him. There is nothing we can accuse Daniel of doing, they concluded, unless it is something to do with the God he worships. So they went to see the king and began to flatter him. They even lied by saying, King Darius, all who rule your empire want you to order that on 30 days, no one is allowed to pray to any god, only your majesty. And anyone who breaks this law is to be thrown into a pit filled with lions. Now their flattery kept the king from asking if everyone had really agreed to this idea. And so King Darius signed the law. Now when a law was signed, the Medes and the Persians had a strong belief that the law could not be changed by even the king himself. When Daniel learned that the order had been signed, he went home. He decided that he was going to obey God just as he had always done, even though it meant that he would be thrown into a den of lions. 
So he went upstairs to a room in his house, and he knelt down at the open window that faced toward Jerusalem, and he began to pray to God, just like always, three times a day. Daniel prayed for his Jewish people that they would truly be sorry for their sins. He confessed their sins and his own sins to God. He asked for forgiveness. He prayed that his people might be restored to their land of Israel. As Daniel prayed, his enemies were lurking nearby. They were just waiting to hear him pray. And sure enough, when they saw and heard him praying to God, they quickly decided that they had succeeded in their plan. They were going to get rid of the aged prophet. So they immediately rushed to see the king. They said, Your Majesty, Daniel does not obey the order you issued. He prays to his God regularly three times a day. He must be thrown into a pit filled with lions. Well, when the king heard this, he was upset and he realized that he had been tricked. He tried and tried all day long until sunset to find some way to rescue Daniel. King Darius loved Daniel and he depended on his wisdom to help him rule. How could he, the king, let these jealous men trick him into signing such a foolish law. But the laws of the Medes and the Persians could not be changed. So the king reluctantly gave orders for Daniel to be thrown into the pit filled with lions. He told Daniel, May your God, whom you serve so loyally, rescue you. So Daniel was brought to the opening of the den of hungry lions and was thrown down into the pit. The growls of the ferocious beast could be heard from below. A stone was put over the mouth of the pit and the royal seal was put on it so that no one could rescue Daniel. King Darius returned to the palace and spent a sleepless night. He was so grief-stricken that he had foolishly let his best servant die. While King Darius was wide awake in his palace, God had sent an angel to protect Daniel. The angel shut the mouths of the lions so they could not harm Daniel. Daniel was protected by God. At dawn, the king got up and returned to the pit. Daniel, servant of the living God, he cried out. Was the God you serve so loyally able to save you from the lions? Daniel answered, May your majesty live forever. God sent his angel to shut the mouths of the lions so they could not hurt me. He did this because I was innocent. The king was overjoyed and he gave orders for Daniel to be pulled out of the pit. The king commanded those who had accused Daniel to be arrested and thrown into the pit filled with lions. The lions pounced on them and broke all their bones. This time there was no angel to protect them. King Darius wrote to the people of every nation, I command that everyone should fear and respect Daniel's God. He is a living God and he will rule forever. 
His kingdom will never be destroyed, and His power will never come to an end. He rescues and performs miracles. He saved Daniel from being killed by the lions. Will you dare to be a Daniel and stand up for what is right, even though everyone else is doing wrong? Sometimes we might not want to pray before we eat lunch at school because no one else is doing it. But God wants you to be faithful to Him like Daniel was. Perhaps you might find it hard to tell others about Jesus, but God wants us to be bold for Him, even when others might make fun of us for doing it. Sometimes people around you won't agree with what you are doing that is right, or they may even try to get you in trouble for doing it. But Daniel was faithful, so we can be faithful too. Our memory verse is Joshua 24, 24. We will serve the Lord our God and obey Him. God honors those who honor Him. He promises to help us obey Him. Let's say our verse again. Joshua 24, 24. We will serve the Lord our God and obey Him. Remember, God is the ruler of the lions, the kings, and of all mankind. And He will never let any harm come to you that is not in His perfect will. Daniel loved God more than fame, more than friendship, more than life itself. And God took care of Daniel and used his testimony to tell many people about himself. Let's pray. Father, help us to follow Daniel's example and do what is pleasing to you at all times. Help us to be loyal to you no matter what. Please give us the courage we need to obey you. We love you and want to serve you no matter what or where we are. Thank you for always being there with us and helping us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, let's be bold and brave for God.